The variable injection timing system comprises VIT actuators located on the fuel pumps and pneumatic components located on the control console at the side of the engine. Supply 7 bar control air pressure to the pneumatic components on the engine side console. Switch control from the engine room to the engine side console. Turn the regulating hand wheel until the tapered slots of the two levers are aligned. The throttle non-return valve must be fully open before adjusting the VIT system. Loosen the lock nut and screw the spindle counterclockwise as far as it will go. Make sure that the pressurized air reaches the VIT actuator. It may be necessary to switch the changeover valve manually. The pilot valve must be adjusted so that when the spindle is pressed 8 mm inwards, the control air pressure will be 5.5 bar. Turn the regulating hand wheel so that the steel bar just touches the pilot valve. Insert a distance piece with a thickness of precisely 8 mm. If the control air pressure deviates from 5.5 bar, loosen the lock screw and turn the spring retainer cap of the pilot valve until the pressure, which can be read on the pressure gauge on the engine side control console, reads 5.5 bar. Note that it will not be possible to obtain the correct pressure if the throttle non-return valve is not fully open. Screw the spindle clockwise until a pressure drop can just be registered. Screw the spindle counterclockwise one revolution and lock it in this position with a lock nut. This position prevents a sudden increase in VIT index and thereby a sudden increase in the maximum combustion pressure. Make sure that the VIT index is set at zero. Measure distance R 
between the two pivoting points. Note down the result. Measure distance L between the pivoting point and the center line of the VIT rack. Note down the result. Measure distance X between the pivoting point and the center line of the VIT rack. Note down the result. To ensure that the movement of the link is evenly distributed around the center line of the VIT rack, R must equal L plus X. In the event that R does not equal L plus X, displace the lever until new measurements confirm that R equals L plus X. When the correct position is obtained, mark the position of the lever and stamp the cylinder number on the locking plate and lever. Turn the regulating hand wheel until the pressure on the pressure gauge reads 2.75 bar. The VIT rack must be adjusted so that the middle index of the VIT rack can be read when a control air pressure of 2.75 bar is applied. If the actual VIT index does not correspond to the middle index, adjust the link until it does. Start the engine and run it up to a load corresponding to the brake point load. Use the indicator drive or PMI system to adjust the load until it corresponds to the brake point load. The mean indicated pressures of the individual cylinders must not deviate more than 0.5 bar. If the deviation is more than 0.5 bar, adjust the load distribution on the fuel index rack of the individual cylinders. The engine is now running at the brake point. At this load, the steel rod must touch both pivoting points. If the rod does not touch both pivoting points, adjust the rod in accordance with step 2.3 of this film. Measure the maximum combustion pressures of each cylinder. Adjust the links or disconnect and lock the VIT racks so that the maximum combustion pressures corrected to ISO ambient conditions are uniform and have the required values. Note down the fuel pump indexes and VIT indexes. Run the engine up until it corresponds to 100% MCR. Use the indicator drive or PMI system to adjust the load so that it corresponds to 100% MCR. The mean indicated pressures of the individual cylinders must not deviate more than 0.5 bar. If the deviation is more than 0.5 bar, adjust the load distribution on the fuel index rack of the individual cylinders. Again, measure the maximum combustion pressures for each cylinder. Adjust the links or displace and lock the VIT racks so that the maximum combustion pressures corrected to ISO ambient conditions are uniform and have the required values. Note down the fuel pump and VIT indexes. 
Note down the VIT indexes at breakpoint and 100% MCR and calculate the average index. Determine the middle value of the VIT rack and calculate the difference between the middle index and the calculated average index. The result of this calculation will determine how much the cams are to be turned. If the result exceeds 0.5 mm, the cams must be turned according to step 1.6 of this film, after step 1.5 has been completed. The purpose of turning the cams is to distribute the breakpoint and 100% MCR service points evenly around the middle value of the VIT rack. Note down the VIT indexes at breakpoint and at 100% MCR and calculate the difference. Add half of this difference to the middle value of the VIT rack. Subtract half of this difference from the middle value of the VIT rack. Calculate the average VIT index at breakpoint and at 100% MCR. Determine the control air pressures corresponding to the average VIT index at breakpoint and at 100% MCR. Stop the engine before making any adjustments. Make sure that control air is able to pass the changeover valve. Supply a control air pressure of 7 bar to the pilot valve. If the links were adjusted in step 1.4, then adjust again so that a control air pressure of 2.75 bar corresponds to the middle value of the VIT rack. Turn the fuel regulating handle to the breakpoint position. At this position, the steel rod touches both pivoting points. Displace the pilot valve bracket until the calculated control air pressure at brake point is obtained. Turn the fuel regulating handle to the 100% MCR position. Displace the lowermost pivoting point until the calculated control air pressure at 100% MCR is obtained. Start the engine and run it up to a load corresponding to the brake point. Make sure that the control air pressure is able to pass the changeover valve. Fine adjust the links so that the maximum combustion pressures corrected to ISO ambient conditions are uniform and have the required value. Load the engine until it corresponds to 100% MCR and fine adjust the lowermost pivoting point so that the maximum combustion pressures corrected to ISO ambient conditions are uniform and have the required values. Cams must be turned if the value calculated in step 1.4 of this film is exceeded. The actual fuel pump lead must be determined before turning the cams. Make sure that the reversing links are in the ahead position. Disconnect the air pipe and remove the cover from the puncture valve. Remove the plug screws to provide access for the measuring tool. Remove the puncture valve. Mount the measuring tool, making sure that it engages correctly with the bore in the top of the fuel pump plunger. Turn the cylinder concerned to top dead center. Read the actual fuel pump lead directly on the measuring tool. Read the VIT index. 
If the VIT index is not at zero, the lead must be corrected before it is recorded in the engine logbook. Carry out fine adjustments through the small cover. If the camshaft has been dismantled or if new cams have been mounted, adjust the cams before mounting the lower part of the camshaft housing. Remove the plugs from the cam and insert copper gaskets. Mount but do not tighten the snap-on couplings. Connect the snap-on couplings to the high-pressure pump and vent the system. When oil without air bubbles flows from the couplings, fully tighten the couplings. Turn the engine until the special spanner can be mounted, then raise the pressure until oil seeps out between the cam and camshaft. Read the measuring tool once again before turning the cam. Turn the cam in the required direction. See also step 1.4 of this film. Follow the turning of the cam on the measuring tool and stop turning when the required change has been obtained. Relieve the system of pressure and remove the spanner and hydraulic tools. Leave the cams to settle for a minimum of 15 minutes and then mount the plugs. Turn the cylinder concern to top dead centre and read the new fuel pump lead. Read the VIT index. If the VIT index is not at zero, the lead must be corrected before it is recorded in the engine logbook. Mount the cover of the camshaft housing. Provide the puncture valve with new sealing rings and lubricate with molybdenum disulfide. Tighten the puncture valve to the torque stated in the instruction book, Volume 2, Chapter 909, and mount the plug screws, cover and control air pipe. Finally, change over to normal engine control. Make sure that the VIT system changeover valve is properly connected. The system will have to be adjusted when certain components are replaced. Regarding the throttle non-return valve, see part 1, step 1.1 of this film. Regarding the pilot valve, see part 1, step 1.1 of this film. Regarding the VIT actuators, see part 1, step 1.2 of this film. Measure the maximum combustion pressures regularly, especially after bunkering new fuel oil. Adjust the individual links until the maximum combustion pressures, corrected to ISO ambient conditions, are uniform and have the required value. If all the maximum combustion pressures are either too high or too low, displace the pilot valve bracket.
The purpose of this adjustment is to keep the brake point at the selected engine load and to control the pressure increase. An excessive pressure increase may lead to a poor cylinder condition. In this event, contact the engine builder before making any adjustment. Start the engine and run it up to a load corresponding to the brake point load and hereafter to 100% MCR load. Use the indicator drive or PMI system to adjust the load so that it corresponds to the brake point load and 100% MCR load. Note down the fuel pump indexes. The mean indicated pressure of the individual cylinders must not deviate more than 0.5 bar. If the deviation is larger than 0.5 bar, adjust the load distribution on the fuel index rack of the individual cylinders. Switch from engine room control to control from the engine side console. Turn the fuel regulating hand wheel corresponding to the determined fuel pump index at brake point. If the steel rod does not touch both pivoting points, loosen it from the shaft and turn it to the correct position. Start the engine and run it up to a load corresponding to the brake point load. Make sure that the steel rod touches both pivoting points. Adjust the links until all maximum combustion pressures are uniform and then displace the pilot valve bracket until the average combustion pressure, corrected to ISO ambient conditions, is at the required value. Load the engine so that it corresponds to 100% MCR load and displace the lowermost pivoting point until the average combustion pressure, corrected to ISO ambient conditions, is at the required value. Decrease the load until it corresponds to 40-50% to MCR load and displace the uppermost pivoting point until the VIT racks just start to move inwards. This occurs at a control air pressure of about 0.5 bar. Lock the pivoting point in this position and change over to normal engine control.